All right, so we're going to continue to talk about conformations of alkanes, and we're going to move on from ethane to a longer molecule, butane. So we've got four carbons. Here we go, one, two, three, four carbon atoms in this butane, and we're going to be looking down that central bond between carbons two and three. So let's imagine we are standing in front of our molecule like this, and we're going to look this way, and we'll just draw our Newman projection of butane. So if I look up, I'm going to see a methyl group, CH3, I'm going to write it in as ME, so ME equals CH3. You might see either of these um, in your organic chemistry courses, it's just a different way of saying the same thing. Some people like to write ME, it's just quicker. So we look down to our left and right, we've got hydrogen atoms. And then on that back carbon, we look up and to our left and right, we see more hydrogens. And then if we look down, we see that other methyl group pointing right down at our feet. So there is the Newman projection of butane. Now there are more confirmations for butane than there are for ethane. So things are gonna get a little bit more interesting here. And we'll start by talking about the different staggered conformations of butane. So the first staggered conformation that we're going to talk about for butane is the anti-conformation. And in this conformation, the two methyl groups are pointed 180 degrees apart. So that dihedral angle theta between them equals 180 degrees. And this is the most stable conformation of all of the possible conformations of butane. And remember, most stable means that it has the lowest energy. So the other possible staggered conformation for butane is the gauche conformation. And gauche means awkward in French. And that's because we have an awkward steric interaction between the methyl groups. The dihedral angle between those methyl groups is 60 degrees. And remember methyl groups, it's a CH3. So we have two kind of bigger CH3 groups that are getting close together and that adds energy to this molecule. So in the gauche conformation, it has higher energy than anti, but it still has lower energy than any of the eclipsed conformations. It just has that little awkward additional energy because the methyl groups are closer together, but it's still staggered. All right, so we're gonna talk about eclipsed butane now. And the first eclipsed conformation that we're gonna talk about is called the syn conformation. Now the syn conformation is the least stable the least stable of all the conformations. The methyl groups are at a dihedral angle of zero. And this causes a high destabilization. So it causes high energy. This molecule is not chill. This molecule is strained. That's because of two things. We've got the methyl groups trying to occupy the same space. So this is a little bit worse than the gauche that we saw before because there's zero degrees in that dihedral angle. So they're really in each other's way. But then we also have that torsional strain that we talked about in the last video, and that's the strain of these CH bonds being in each other's way. So this has sterics and torsional strain. So it's like a little bit sad. All right, so we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk about the regular eclipse conformation. This one is not so bad. So we can see that our methyl group is eclipsing with hydrogen. This other methyl group's eclipsing with hydrogen and then these two hydrogens are eclipsing. The regular eclipse conformations are lower energy than the syn.
because at least in this case, the two methyl groups are not getting in each other's way sterically, but they're higher in energy than all of the staggered conformations because they still have torsional strain. So let's do a full conformational analysis for butane. We're going to look at this graph of energy versus dihedral angle. We will keep the front carbon fixed and rotate the back carbon all the way around and look at what happens to the energy. So the first one here is the sin eclipse conformation. And this one, remember, has the highest energy because it has the torsional strain and also the steric interaction between those two methyl groups trying to occupy the same space. So we'll draw just a line up here for a very high energy. Next, if we rotate the back carbon 60 degrees, we have a gauche conformation. And so we have a little bit of extra energy because of that steric interaction between the methyl groups, but it is a staggered conformation, so it's relatively low in energy. So we'll just draw, we'll just draw our line right there. We'll rotate again a further 60 degrees. We have another eclipsed conformation. This one has torsional strain, but no steric interactions of the methyl groups trying to be in each other's space. So its energy is lower than the anti, but it's still higher than all of the staggered conformations. We'll go one more and we see that nice anti conformation, the staggered anti conformation. And the methyl groups are pointed as far away from each other as they can be. So we'll just draw that energy line really low. Rotate again. We have got another regular eclipse conformation. So we'll draw it the same as the previous one. Rotate one more time. We've got the other gauche conformation. We'll draw it the same as the first one. And then if we rotated a further 60 degrees, we would be back at the sin, which has that really high, high energy. So let's connect our dots and see what that beautiful graph will look like. So there we go. There's our energy graph for butane and it's a little bit more interesting than it was for ethane.